not surprised, but I find it interesting that the network brought on their own DP, even though you had DP'd the original series. Mm -hmm. um, walk, talk us through that. What was going through your mind? Like, and, and you took a lesser position, a cam opting mm -hmm. position, which is which is still great. But what was that like? What, and why did you stay on, um, even though they didn't offer you the DP right. job? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it, it was a big moment for me. Um, because just coming up shooting little videos and projects, you know, short films, comedy sketches, um, I was also working as a grip, you know? I was a, a union grip at the same time, and that's where I made my money, and I would take off work days to go shoot stuff. And then, you know, first season I wasn't allowed to DP, which was fine. I mean, I, I came in, I interviewed and everything, but eventually, you know, they decided that they wanted to go with somebody more experienced, which, which I respect, you know, for sure. And and had I shot the first season, it would have been a sharp learning curve, you know. I mean, I would have seen all kinds of things that I had no idea about, um, just as far as making a TV show, and I for sure would have been thrown in the fire, you know. Um, so to come on as a camera operator is not exactly what I set out to do, but, you know, I, I kind of had to just bite my tongue, even though there was a moment where I was like, well, I shot this, I should be able to, to DP this, you know. But I understood what they were saying, and I saw it as a learning opportunity, you know. I mean, I, I had never been a camera operator on on a TV show either. And it was, even though it wasn't the bigger step that I wanted, it was still a step up. You know, for me, it worked to just kind of put my ego aside and take what I have, you know. Because it was still a good step. And it'll come eventually, if you keep doing what you're doing, and it's bringing you success, then keep going with it. Oh! Hey, come on, that's a, uh, okay. that's a perfectly good Molson. Hey! No, stop. Hey! Try that again, and this is gonna happen to your dick. Yeah, that's right. That's your ding-dong in two pieces. Here you go. You wanna sing something, Adam? No. Oh, oh no, 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 no. It's okay. Adam, come on. Stupid! No, no, no. we're gonna get, we'll dry He's you off. very dumb. Stupid! Right, let's go to the bathroom. Oh. What's your approach to lighting that? I know that that is obviously challenging, and there's sometimes sacrifices when you have multiple cameras. Totally. I feel like more than not, I gravitate towards natural lighting, you know, like uh, enhancing the location that we're at. You know, unless, unless the story calls for something different. Basically, the way I shoot is almost always story-driven. Uh, and there is certainly many sacrifices every single day. But you have to remember, which is another leave your ego at the door moment, that it's not about you as a DP, it's about the story and the comedy first and foremost. And that's what people register first. So if you're serving that properly, then it's okay. It's okay to make some sacrifices. And no one's gonna know probably but you. You're not funny. I'm not funny. Me. Adam, the, the laugh, the laugh uh, giver, demand. The way we shoot is often we cross shoot, which is can be very challenging to get a good look while cross shooting. Uh, one thing I rely heavy on a lot is menace arms for cross shooting, because I can still, you know, sometimes I'll do cross shooting and I'll have two menace arms armed out, so I can still light on the, or still shoot on the contrast side, because and one way we shoot workaholics too is just we'll do a really big wide and then you know I'm not often I'm not moving in lights for close-ups I try and light everything as much as possible so the actors can roam wherever they want and then you know that gives them the freedom to improv because this shows a lot about improv mm -hmm. and I don't want to restrain them to one little area and they can't do what they want to do for their performance um, so that's tough it's challenging Oh, oh, what's happening? Let's kick it in. Here it comes. What's happening? I'm okay. No. 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 Oh, God. No, and I think that's a good point. I think a lot of, especially like seasoned, seasoned DPs will say that like, it's, it's not, a, if you don't notice cinematography, yeah. then you're, you're doing, doing your job. You're doing right. your job. Yeah, right. absolutely. If, if, it, if it's enhancing the story and that's all you're paying attention mm -hmm. to, then that's, that's the point. When you start, 
And obviously there's some exceptions. There's some shows where it, there's very deliberate things that the cinematography is like, hey, look at me. Yeah. And there's scripts that call for that. Right. But, but if that's enhancing the story, which it should be. Right. If you're noticing it, it should be enhancing the story. Exactly. Which is great. I mean, that's your magic moment that you're going for. Yes. But yeah, shooting shooting comedy can be tough because you it, it lends itself to looking bright and flat, which is something that I don't like. Uh, I like sort of the fringe look. For me, for me, the magic combination that I fall in love with is sort of a dramedy thing, where it's you know it's got some shape and some character and some shadows, and you know it's not perfect looking. I have sort of a, a sense that I like to do things simply. And sometimes I have to throw that by the wayside and put a lot of different sources in to hit different spots in the set. And then more sources to do scratches on the wall behind and accents and stuff that I want. So, you know, there's highlights wherever you look to bring up a dark space or, you know, there's variations in the, in the shot. So it's not just all even light, you know, like the, my simplistic mind would tell me, you know, hey, it'd be great to have one big source, big soft source, and cut it down and shape it beautiful. But uh, oftentimes a location doesn't allow for that, and neither does the wide shot that we want to get and everything else. So, um, you know, a lot of times I'll end up putting five or six lights into the into one room and at various angles, and that helps me get different points where the actors are walking into, or you know, so they're free to move about space in and out of light. I call it a free-range organic acting. Artisan, uh, other keywords. Yeah, artisan, yeah. artisan lighting. Yeah, artisan lighting by Grant Smith. Artisan lighting, free-range organic. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs>